we'll start by looking at our um, shear shades, which we have here. And what I'm actually gonna do is, we're actually gonna see how precise they are when, when we're actually gonna open up. When we're gonna pull them up, you're gonna see two things. Number one, they're all low voltage shades. So they're very, very quiet. And you see the precision. And we have a technology called intelligent hembar light. With intelligent hembar alignment, it allows for the shades to be really, really consistent as they come down and come up. Um, so I'll bring them down again. We can see how quiet they are um, and you can see the precision on them. So it's a patented technology that we have, uh, we call intelligent hembar alignment. And when it comes to the fabric offerings of Lutron automated shades, there are many, many fabric openness factors or properties that we can choose from. As we see on the far left one here, we see a very sheer fabric. That's what we call a 10% openness factor. Then we have a 5% openness factor. We also have a three, which means it's more denser. And then the 1% openness factor. All these four are classified as sheer options. So it gives us, um, Visibility, you can see out different kind of layer controls depending on the openness factor. The tighter the openness factor, the more UV protection, the more glare control, uh, and the more sunlight control comes in. And then on the far right, we see our privacy shade, which is typically is used when we're really trying to achieve privacy but have the light come through. Um, so different properties of these. And in our commercial and hospitality offerings, we also have our FIA fabrics, which can be really, really precise um, as to op the openness factor, so they can be spec weight uh, for your projects. What we're seeing is our lighter colored fabric, and now I will bring down um, so we can envision a different perspective of how a darker shade can perform for us. Um, bringing down, we're actually moving 10 shades here, so from the sound level, Hopefully you can hear that it's near silent. Um, so we're bringing down the tame shades. And if you can visualize, you'll notice that visibility um, or more uh, you know, connection to the outdoor can be achieved when we're working with a darker fabric because counterintuitively is actually allowing us to see out more and actually also get, cutting out a lot of the UV, the properties of the fabrics. Here again, we see 10%, 5% openness, 3%, so getting more dense, and then we have a 1% openness, and then on the far right, we can see a privacy shade. Uh, so as you can see, there are different um, offerings to the fabrics um, that can relate to maybe the orientation of the building. What are we facing? Are we facing south or east? Uh, are we facing another building? Is glare control important to us? And all this kind of relates to, you know, energy savings because of the HVAC cost from the UV, um, the UV rays that can be um, you know, reflected back, um, and as well as the heat reflectance on some of the fabric performances can help a lot with the HVAC cost of energy consumption, energy saving, occupant comfort, um, and of course, that really nice connection to the outdoors by being able uh, to have a good view outside. So we have all these properties from these fabrics that can deliver a very well high spec rate performance. On our next, I would like to show you is our blackout shades. And um, give me one quick second, I'm gonna just rotate this. So this actually, we're seeing it in a side channel. So what you're able to achieve is a full blackout where you have no light transmittance coming in, zero light going through. So very ideal for conference rooms, meeting rooms, uh, anywhere we're using projectors and so forth. Um, and of course, for the sheer shades that we saw and including the blackouts, they're all pocketed in nicely um, and hidden in. So different pocket sizes for these projects that we offer. And our shades are really available from different sizes. We can do very small shades on commercial projects, hospitality projects that can run very, very large spans. Uh, all shades are custom made. Um, so everything is made uh, to order with our shades. Marie, um, just real quick, um, the roller shades that we see that are not in the pocket, are those palladium? 
Those are palladium and they are typically offered in our residential market. Thank you for bringing that up. It's typically offered in our residential market, uh, but yes, there are, you know. I just wanted to point that out because the commercial sure. shades generally do recede into a pocket. Um, mm -hmm. Palladium, and I'll put a link in the chat. You can see some of the difference for the palladium. It's meant to be exposed, but it's a very elegant solution. Yes, exactly. Yes, we see it more common in our uh, residential applications. Um, so very exposed and minimal. Uh, but the others, the pocketed, which you can see in here, are the actual pockets for the two sheer shades that I was uh, pulling back to down. Yeah, great, great question. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, as far as the shades, um, as I mentioned, you know, each one of them is custom made, and we have numerous numbers of fabrics, um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of fabrics. Hello, so uh, my name is Aaron. I'm from KML based in New Zealand. Friday morning here. I'm going to quickly run, <clears throat> run you through our materials. So uh, KML really, really, really came about through the reinvention of a, an ancient material, chainmail material, which has been around for 2,000 odd years. Uh, now, chainmail really has two problems. Firstly, it's pretty heavy. So this little bundle weighs about six odd pounds. Secondly, each of these little rings has a join and that join becomes a weak spot when it's under tension, it breaks. So what came out, uh, what we've done at KML is we've reinvented that, that ancient material and we've removed that weak spot. We actually injection mold <clears throat> each of these rings together and each of these rings are joined to four others, which means that the weak spot is gone and we can make humongously large <coughs> uh, single screens without any joins. So <coughs> KML actually came about through uh, the Lord of the Rings movies, where our, our founder was the art director in the weapons, of, weapons and armor department. He had to come up with a material that he could use uh, to make the characters uh, vests so they could wear them for long periods of the day. Came up with this way to uh, use sections of plumbing pipe, which were then metallized, uh, and to give that kind of um, uh, weight that the characters needed, but, but not too heavy so they could wear them for very large uh, periods of the day. So long story short, uh, after the movie's wrapped, uh, Kane carried on his development and um, really uh, came up with this, finalized this process to make injection molded chainmail out of polycarbonate. So the properties of the material are, it remains loose until tension. So once it's under tension in a frame, you can see that obviously we're not a loose material anymore. We've gone from a loose material we're into this frame, but it still has that elastic property. So I can press on it. I can actually move each of these rings around uh, just to give you an idea there. Kind of like a tennis racket still has that tension, but you can, you know, you can press it. Now that opens up a whole range of pretty unique possibilities uh, from a design point of view. Now the material's got some great properties. So uh, very strong. That's why it's used in automotive and aeronautical applications. Um, remains elastic, like I said, which means we can roll it over subframes to give you those kind of push out effects and create some interesting concepts. It's also kinetic. So we do, do a lot of kinetic facades, uh, a lot of moving, um, you know, uh, with, where we work with a lot of kinetic artists around the world. Now, just to talk you through some of the um, other benefits. So material has some great solar reduction properties. So we can actually achieve, achieve up to 70% solar reduction. So that's stopping that sun, direct sunlight coming through and entering your building. So before you even turned on your air conditioning, uh, we've got you covered with up to 70% solar reduction. Another great feature is that the material also has the ability to um, have a, a adjustable density. So we can do that with various concepts. So this is our standard application. Uh, you can actually see that a, it, it looks like there's a, there's a pretty uh, dense material um, aspect there, but actually the, the constricted area is very, very small. So as we open this material up further, we can get up to 70% openness, but it still has that great solar reduction property as well. Okay, so you're probably thinking, well, that's cool, but what do I do with it? Where do I use it? So exterior applications, uh, wherever you would normally use those traditional materials like perforated panel, uh, metal mesh, uh, that's where you can now consider us because you're not restricted with those module sizes. You can actually you know, experiment with your concepts further. And all of those great benefits apply now to your um, uh, 
against your traditional materials. In an interior space, if you're uh, considering just spatial dividers, then material's great for that. Super lightweight again, easy to install. Um, should be some lighting people here. So <clears throat> this is our water clear material. Hit this with some LEDs. You've got a ready-made ceiling fixture, which, which we do a lot of. And we can also bend our hanging tube, which gives you that horizontal aspect there. So if you want a more interesting ceiling feature, pretty easy for us to do. Uh, can you wash of, that then? Say if we have a DMX color changing fixture, you can wash yeah. that surface. Okay. Uh, and we've, you can see some examples here. There's a ton on our website. Uh, we've done a really big project recently in Dubai as part of the expo there, which unfortunately isn't open yet, uh, but that there's some massive solar, uh, massive solar shading screens which are as used for decorative features as well. The last of you, Amy. So yeah, interior. It's we also okay, do a you lot got of, me. Um, I'll be right. I'll be right back. <laughs> we also do a lot of uh, mid-level security screens for airport, where if you're, you know, you need a material for that kind of land side, air side, but you don't want to do a solid wall, then this is where something like this comes in because all of those benefits still apply. Um, you know, the same as the exterior environment and the interior environment, where you've got that super lightweight, you've got that great airflow, so, you know, it's not interfering with the air conditioning layout. Um, and, you know, instead of having a solid wall, you can have that more kind of lightweight, kind of ethereal looking screen there um, that doesn't read like a solid material. Compliance. I dropped the landing page for K-Mail in the chat. If you guys click on that, you'll see a very broad variety of the color changing, the architectural, the curve. There's a lot of examples just straight on their landing page. So yeah, a ton of examples there. Uh, from a compliance point of view, class A for interior use. So we're, we're covered there. Uh, exterior, the, the two main codes there are NFPA 285 and 286. So we've got a pass there for the exterior. Uh, so we're well suited for pretty much every, you know, every, every application you can think of. Um, also, because I know you're on the East Coast, you're probably thinking, what about snow and ice? So because the material is uh, super strong and it's always moving around, in a sense, we can shed that ice and snow load much quicker than a more rigid material. One of the most elegant solutions for surfacing parking garages that you have ever seen. <laughs> yeah, and such a huge um, a range of concepts that you can get out of it. So we're not just a panel, you're not just fixing a flat panel, you know, we can explore different concepts with you all. How was that time? We have about three minutes. Three minutes, okay. Uh, any questions? Not so far. Not it's so an far. extruded, the rings are an extruded tube. What happens if, um, what happens if I have to fix it? So we have a repair ring. So it's a, a snap ring, two piece thing. So even in these very large applications, you know, it's inevitable that you might, you know, during the install process, um, <clears throat> somebody runs over it with a forklift or, or you, you snag on a, a bolt going up the side of the building. And so all we do then is we just get in, we cut out those damaged rings and we just replace them with a repair ring. <clears throat> and they're really easy to spot. You can be down six stories up, you know, as your couple of rings pop and you know where they are and you can replace them. It's actually super easy to cut out. We just use garden um, secateurs, you know, like rose cutters. Um, <clears throat> although the material is very strong, it's easy to cut with those. And then you're not, you can cut out, you know, quite a lot of the material and replace it. Uh, and there's no, there's no inherent loss of tensile strength because there are so many rings in those screens. So do, if, do if those have rings have a seam or do they fuse? Do you have a tool that fuses? No, there's no, there's no That's seam. It. So what happens is we make a, we make a kind of a continuous bolt of material that then gets joined in the same process. So if a customer says to us, I want a you know, 100 foot wide screen, we just join all the bolts together until we get to that width, and then we can cut it to, cut it to height. Now, because there's always some stretch in the material, we don't need absolute finished sizes. We just need a rough opening size, and we can, we can get that material underway and then get it to site that can be easily kind of finished to that exact opening size on site. So it just makes it a whole lot easier to, you know, to program the, um, you know, getting that material underway. Do you have specialists come out to the field when it needs installed or how do, how do we manage installation so that we know that we're going to have just a clean process? Yeah, so we've got used to in the last year dealing remotely with our customers, but you know, traditionally we would send a representative, uh, but we've had some pretty big installs around the US now um, from Texas to, into California and into Ohio. So we've got partners in 
um, you know, a lot of those key areas. Uh, plus, you know, typically it would normally be in the, the metal workers or maybe the glass um, installer scope mm -hmm. because it's pretty similar. Even though the material is, is you know, uniquely different, actually the, the um, conditions as to install are kind of the same to a lot of those different materials. So those of you uh, who don't know me, uh, my name is Ralph Galizzi and I am the uh, director of sales for North and South America. And we're based out of uh, Plano, Texas, right about where Dr. Pepper is, you know. So <laughs> anyway, so uh, what we are is uh, we are a material science company. We work in nanotechnologies and we embed products into raw materials. And it just happens to be glass and, you know, polycarbonate that we do right now. So those of you who do not uh, know anything about uh, smart glass, I know I only have about eight minutes, so I'm going to make it quick. I'm going to walk you around my office. And I'm going to show you different types of smart glass because a lot of people uh, who know this product know that it turns on and off and that's it. Um, Gauzy has gone a lot further than that with all of, with all of their uh, technologies. And we are the largest uh, uh, company that has R&D in, in the entire world for uh, smart glass products. We're based out of Tel Aviv, Israel, and our uh, manufacturing for PDLC smart glass is based in Tel Aviv. And then we also have another product that's based in uh, Dusseldorf, Germany, which is our SBD product. Our SBD product, you may have even seen it already. It's in the roof of the Mercedes and the McLaren and a lot of those products where it actually is dark. So these two products right here is what I'm talking about. So the product that turns on and off is the smart glass and it is private. When you stick your hand behind it, you cannot see anything. It blocks about 40% of the light. This product, the SPD, blocks about 99% of the light. But when you turn it on, it goes not quite clear. It's still about 40% uh, you know, light transmission on here. And it doesn't, but it's not private. So you would never use this in a home to where you would want, you know, maybe have somebody walking around in their underwear and things like that. But uh, you would use this in their home. They could do that in their shower or wherever. Up a little bit. We can't see your glass. There sorry, you go. sorry about that. Okay. Oh, sorry. So this is something that you would use for privacy. This is something you would use for heat control and for dimming or darkening a room, okay? Now, a lot of people uh, think that you can only do smart glass with, with partitions and walls and windows. But what we did over here is we can also make furniture with it. So you can see this is a conference table. I don't know if any of you can see that or not. <laughs> yep. Okay, that's, that's one of the things we do. We do offer this product in laminated glass and retrofit. Retrofit meaning that you're, you already have the glass and you just wanna put film on top of it. So this right here, if I could show you, this is film. It's on top of the glass and this, there's no film on here at all. And you can see the difference. Well, first of all, when you stand back and look at it, there's hardly any noticeable difference, but there is a thing called haze. So if you look at it from the side, you might see a little bit of haze and you can tell where the film is and where it's not. It's called off angle head. I like that. But this right here, if you want to turn it, make it private, you just turn it off like this. So people who use this in their homes, in their bathrooms, in their conference rooms, uh, hospitals use a lot of this because of the bacteria to get rid of curtains and blinds. They put this in there instead. Anyway, but they usually buy laminated glass. So Ralph, just to be clear, that privacy you can get in a glass format or a film format or just a film format? Both, both. both. So it. let me just, so when I started this, when I started talking, I told you that we do more than just turn glass on and off, okay? Now I'm gonna show you something here. We actually do patterns inside a glass. So we have customers that come to us and say, we want a unique pattern inside the glass and we'd like you to make this for us. So Gauss is the only company in the world that can do all of this and control it with our controllers. And I'll show you the controllers here in just a minute. So there's one sort of pattern right there. You can see it can go turn, it can turn all on, all off, or we can actually have the predetermined pattern in there. Okay. There's another pattern over here. If you look at this one, you can see this one's kind of cool. It's a wave and it just happens to be rolling back and forth. What's, what's interesting about this is the, the controllers uh, actually can, can pre-program and turn them on and off at different intervals and everything else. Most people have seen this type of a, a pattern, but with blinds 
in glass. So they look like, you know, level or blinds or something in the glass. This is our gray film. This is our white. And then one of the reasons that we're here with Synergy and everything else is because of Lutron. And Lutron, uh, we have developed our controllers that actually connect to the Lutron power pack, the zero to 10 volts. Doesn't have to be power pack, but just zero to 10 volt option on there. And I left this open so you could see it's very easy to, to connect. You have three. So any, anyone that is familiar with the Lutron Vive system, that is exactly what we're looking at right there. One of the most basic fundamental control systems that Lutron can control this sophisticated glass product. Exactly. Now we only use the two of the three wires coming out of here. So you hook up the, the neutral and the hot or the line, and then the ground comes from here. Those three wires come directly to here, out here goes to the glass, and this is the zero to 10 volts that's tying around and going to the power pack. That's how easy it is to, con to connect this. And when you do that, you can take the Pico, obviously the Pico that you're all familiar with, and you can turn the glass on and turn the glass off. And you can also stop it halfway. So if I want to take this and stop it like right there, halfway, it's dimmable. You can't just drop the voltage on this thing and dim the glass. There has to be some other controls inside that does this. So this is how it's happening. Okay. So now let's go over here. Oops, let me put this back here. Let's go over here and talk about the controllers. Uh, so that we have different types of controllers for this glass. Uh, we have a very, very small controller that handles about 40 square, square feet, which is this guy right here. Maybe I should turn around so you could see it. I could see it. So this is about 40 square feet. It's about the size of two cell phones stacked on top of each other. All of our controllers have this little green uh, connector on there. It pops out, the 110 volts goes in here. The output snaps on here and goes in to directly to the glass. This particular controller is our basic controller. It just turns it on, off, and it also fades. So there's a little, there's a little uh, you could put a screwdriver right there and slow or speed up how fast you want the glass to transition. If you have more than 40 square feet, we have this one that can handle up to 100 square feet. This one does a lot more though. This one not only does the, uh, the zero 10 volts, like I told you before, of course it turns it on and off. It has a dry contact on this side. It also has a DMX interface so that you can actually control it through software. Uh, and you can also right here, there's a little, there's a little uh, switch right here in the end that can transition the glass if the lighting is not correct in the room. If you have the wrong lighting in the room, it's, it has a possibility that the glass can flicker. So we change the frequency of the glass instead of you making replace all of the light bulbs in the room. And we can make the glass do this. Again, these pattern glasses that I showed you, they all are controlled by this bigger controller. This one has the same connector on this side, but on the back side, it has 32 channel outputs. It actually comes in 16 and 32 channels. So every, every one of these, every one of these things that are happening here is a segment, which means that there's a wire going to every single one of these uh, patterns that are going across here. And every wire there ties back to this guy. Okay. And the, those, those of you who do know or don't know, you can also, you can also project on the glass. So if you look at it right here, um, when it's turned on, it blinds you. But that when comes it turns off, it blocks good. The... That's sorry? good. That comes okay. through really nice. I was wondering how that would show. So anyway. So, so we, have, uh, we have 40 seconds and I have two questions for you. One sure. is you talked about a lot of wiring connections, but sure. when you show the mullions of the windows and things like that, none of that is visible. Correct. So actually, channel. you wouldn't want to see any of that. No, of course not. But this is the wiring right here. So this is a harness that they would see. And this would all be inside the frame. So right. I left this like this so you could see. You would take the frame and it would be okay. hidden inside. In the last 10 seconds, there is a very unique property of gauzy glass that there is a very quick time that it goes from clear to opaque, which is very different than some of the other electric glasses. Um, it's actually milliseconds. But, yes. Uh, but yeah. Go ahead. It, but it could be it could be changed. It could be, it could switch. But it's a faster transition if you want.